Hey everyone, Cy Venom here. Now, if you're like me, the first time you started working with Kubernetes, you probably realized that you bit off a little bit more than you can chew. In fact, we're getting a lot of feedback from customers saying that they're having a hard time spinning up complete Kubernetes environments. That is not just the cluster, but also kind of some of the operational software that runs within Kubernetes, as well as some kind of multi-tenancy tasks. Now today, I'm excited to announce EKS Blueprints, that's Blueprints for Elastic Kubernetes Service on AWS. Now, this is an open source framework to essentially allow you to get a batteries included Kubernetes environment. And it's gonna do three major things. And I'm gonna walk through those one by one today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today with EKS Blueprints, you can get started with CDK, that's AWS Cloud Development Kit allowing you to work with AWS using some of your favorite programming languages. Uh, so that's going to be more of a procedural approach, kind of step by step. Terraform, very quickly, it's an open source infrastructure as code tool from HashiCorp, and it's really rapidly gaining in popularity and essentially enables you to work with infrastructure using a declarative fashion. Essentially, instead of having the individual steps for how to deploy something, you kind of lay out the final state and Terraform will take care of the details of how to get there for you. So today we're gonna to be focusing on the Terraform-based approach. By the way, be sure to check out uh, the links in the description for how to get started uh, yourself. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here, kind of one of my favorite things to do is sketch out some pseudocode. So I'm gonna write out some Terraform code and show you kind of the infrastructure that it'll be able to bring up. We'll go step by step. So let's go ahead, get started. Okay, so the first thing that we have sketched out here is for the VPC. Now, this is kind of a prerequisite for all of the other things that'll live within the VPC. And I quickly wanna say that this isn't actually part of EKS Blueprints. It's gonna be another module. And this particular one, uh, and we have the source kind of written out here, it can be pulled from the Terraform registry, which is a place where you can store providers to work with cloud providers, as well as modules uh, such as this one, which enable you to you know, create resources within cloud providers like AWS. So this will kind of let us bring up a VPC. We'll set the name, uh, the availability zones, and there's kind of a few more things that we configure here. But let's get to the interesting bits here for how we actually configure our cluster. That's gonna be kind of the first thing that EKS Blueprints does really well. Okay, so now we've sketched out the second module, EKS, and let's kind of go step by step here. First of all, we need to tell which VPC it's gonna live within. So here's actually something very interesting with Terraform. Since it's declarative, it'll try to run all of the modules all at once. So the way you kind of get, uh, get around that to make sure the EKS cluster doesn't come up until the VPC is created is to create what's called implicit dependencies. Now this is one way to kind of order the way that things come up, but essentially this module won't get executed until the actual VPC is available. And that's that implicit dependency here. In addition, we'll pass in some other things, things like subnets, uh, which correspond to the same ones in the VPC, the version of the Kubernetes cluster, 1.22, and then some other configuration things like maybe setting up a managed node group. Now, one of the things that we can do here is take advantage of Terraform to do something like a Terraform plan, which will, with some confidence, tell us what's gonna actually execute, and then we'll do a Terraform apply, which will bring all of it up. Um, and so this module specifically as part of the EKS Blueprints, handles a lot of the kind of uh, complexities of bringing up an EKS cluster. So it'll pick the right version, put it in the right subnet, the right AZs, right VPC, and also kind of give you the ability to configure node groups as well. And I think this is one of the kind of prime advantages of working with um, EKS Blueprints is gonna be being able to manage the cluster configuration. Now, next, I wanna kind of show some of the operational software that can run within EKS Blueprints. Now, one of the things that I should say here is that EKS Blueprints um, allows you to deploy a number of AWS supported services, as well as some that aren't supported by AWS. So it's kind of best to look at EKS Blueprints as a reference, kind of a best practices approach when building out your own infrastructure automation. And again, that's because some of the things that EKS Blueprints allows you to configure are kind of community driven and built and not necessarily supported by AWS. So let's get to that second advantage and see what some of those add-ons, that operational software that we can add to our cluster are.
Okay, so very quickly, let's talk about what I have sketched out here. Now, I have an EKS cluster and it's running on EC2. Let's say it's distributed across 10 nodes within that cluster. I've got a couple of namespaces and there's some AWS services I wanna use. And so let's kind of get started with how and when I might wanna take advantage of some of these add-ons. Now, first off, let's say that I wanna expose our application to the outside world. So let's say that I have some users out here and they wanna be able to access that application. Well, I might want a load balancer. And so there's an add-on that you can take advantage of that um, and it kind of enables you to provision load balancers for your applications. So let's see what that looks like. So, you know, something like enable ALB equals true. And you run that Terraform uh, kind of apply and it'll spin up the ALB kind of add-on extension to your EKS cluster. Next, let's say that, you know, our application is getting a lot of traffic and we wanna be able to scale up a little bit. Now, Carpenter is a great cluster autoscaler. It's an open source project and kind of developed by AWS and contributed to the community. Carpenter is gonna enable you to take advantage of some key features of EC2 when kind of auto-scaling the cluster itself. So right now it says, uh, you know, 10 fixed EC2 nodes, but let's say that we wanted to be able to scale up and down in response to load. And so we'll kind of mark this out and say that it can scale anywhere between 10 and 30 nodes. Uh, and it'll do so, you know, following some of the metrics that we may have configured within Carpenter, you know, watching things like the CPU usage or the memory usage. All right, now let's say that I wanna be able to stream some of my application uh, access logs to S3 and kind of integrate it with something like CloudWatch. So I'll use FluentBit, which is another kind of add-on that I can use with EKS Blueprints, which is gonna enable me to do exactly that. And so kind of very quickly, let me go ahead and start sketching some of these out. Okay, so now that I've gotten those filled out, of course, FluentBit is gonna enable me to kind of store some of those application logs uh, using something like CloudWatch, which could store them on something like S3. So we have that integration set up all through that Terraform script. And of course, one more that maybe I can talk about here is Prometheus to enable us to kind of get some of the metrics of how our apps are running. I do want to mention that this also enables you to integrate with an AWS service, uh, Amazon managed service for Prometheus. So all in all, what we're seeing here is that EKS Blueprints can not only kind of configure uh, the cluster itself, but kind of a host of some of the operational software, you know, some AWS supported, some not AWS supported uh, to kind of run within your EKS environment. Now, lastly, the third thing that I wanna talk about here is gonna be that multi-tenancy that we talked about. And very quickly, I'm just gonna call it Teams and sketch out kind of what this could look like. Now, very quickly, what I have sketched out here is kind of two different teams that need access to different parts of the kind of cluster. Of course, we're gonna follow the principle of least privilege, kind of a security best practice. Now, certain members only have access to working within namespace A and some other members have access to working within namespace B, maybe one person who needs access to both environments. Now, I think this is one of the kind of powerful things about being able to set up multi-tenancy using the team's capability within EKS Blueprints, able to do so with integrations with RBAC and IRSA as well. And a little bit more uh, information about that will be in the description below. Okay, now I hope you found this video helpful. This was a quick overview of EKS Blueprints. You can get started today with EKS Blueprints for Terraform or CDK. I'll have some links in the description below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and be sure to subscribe if you wanna watch more videos like this in the future. Thank you.